All right, welcome back to chapter 11. I've thrown you for a loop because I have brought in another guide here to show you the house styles. Now, the house styles is a, a PDF that is attached to this chapter, so you can download this and look at it at your leisure. Uh, we are kind of going to go through a little bit of it and look at it and recognize all of the different house styles that they actually have available. And these run way more than I ever thought was out there until I started doing this course, you know, 10 years ago or six years ago when it became uh, required in 2014 to find out all of the differences or similarities that are in all these house styles. And I've tried to provide you a picture so that you could see it. Now, let's see. I don't think I can do that. Um, so we've got Art Deco, and here's an example of it. All right. You've got a bungalow or craftsman. It's a small cottage. We've got Cape Cod. The, the, and I've tried to include one little comment that would make it identifiable for you. So for instance, in a Cape Cod, it's a symmetrical appearance with a centered front entry. And there's an example of what it would look like. Colonial, square rectangular shape, doors located in the exact center with the same number of windows on either side. That is what would define a colonial. You also hear it called a Dutch colonial. You have a contemporary modern architecture uh, popularized in the 20s through the 50s. Um, minimalism. I always think of this almost like the Brady Bunch house. Uh, <clears throat> now, it's not so much the outside, and, but some of the inside. Uh, <clears throat> there's one called a craftsman house, which is virtually the same as a bungalow. There is a uh, creole, which is, uses timber, fr uh, timber frames or brick or bousselage which is mud combined with moss and animal hair to form bricks. Little older home, probably aren't going to see that anywhere but in the South where that was a common building material. There's the thing called a federal home. How about a French provincial uh, used in France in the countryside uh, in the 1600s? Nice looking house. There's a Georgian home, usually had side gables, that's this right here, and this right here is a side gable with symmetrical arrangement of windows. Bang, 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 bang. All right. Gothic Revival. As you can see, it has the ornate structure here on the, the roofs and the dormers. You have a Greek Revival house, which is typically defined by columns throughout the front of the house. Here is a international house, and an international house is a design that uses rounded corners, but as you, appears to be weightless. And what I mean by here, see this overhang right here? That could cause it. Here's one, here's another. So it's a very specific structure. The Taliante, a low-pitched roof, right there, symmetrical rectangular house, always seems taller because of this upper row right here, than it should be. There's a Monterey house. The Monterey house is distinctive is that it has balconies on both floors right here. All right? Two-story two -story veranda. There's one in the top. There's one on the bottom. The national house. There's a lot of national houses downtown Indianapolis. If you ever get a chance, some of the older districts are Great, because you could put a lot of them in a small area. Uh, Neoclassical features classical uh, columns and iconic capitals uh, and balustrade. All right. That is the ornate in the little rail right there, the uh, ornate spindles along the porch of the roof. Uh, Two-story structure with single wings. Prairie Empire, right here. See this wing and this wing? It's a two-story house, but it's got single stories out here. Pueblo, obviously not a design you see a lot in the Midwest. Used a lot out in the West, 
because of the natural materials that they had that they could use to build that earth tone or stu stucco looking uh, structure. The Queen Anne, lavished with gingerbread. Gingerbread is all the ornate carvings that you see hanging from the decks right here. Also notice the widow's walk right here by the circular turret room. There's some ornate uh, spindles there as well. And they do have these things called turret rooms, which is the round room on the corner. Ranch, obviously we all pretty much know what a ranch is. Regency uh, is a, while it is a style of a house, it is also a very specific look. It is a white stucco with a black front door and typically divine, has columns in it somewhere. That would be the Regency home. In the salt box, notice that the pitch on the back right here is different than the pitch on the front of the house. Typically a wooden framed house with symmetrical windows on either side of the door. Once again, it's the difference in the pitch of the roof that lends it to being easily identifiable. Shed style homes, <clears throat> believe it or not, it is a shed style home. Notice how each roof only has one slant. See how this roof is combined here at this gable? Here is just one roof slanted one way. One roof slanted one way. All right. In the shingle type of home, the thing that notice about this is the exterior looks like shingles. All right. Typically high gables. See the big peak in the gables here. Um, shotgun house. The only thing I remember a shotgun house typically is that's the one that Elvis was born on. Born in there was talk about a shotgun home. Gets its name from the fact that you can shoot a shotgun from the front door straight to the back door. It's typically only one room wide, one room behind the other. So it's two or three or four rooms deep without any hallway. So you walk through the living room to get to the kitchen, to get to the family room, to get to the bedroom. All right. It is one straight shot all the way through. You've got Spanish electric. Uh, once again, these kind of look like the Pueblo homes. Notice they still have the exterior stucco. There is usually a courtyard in here somewhere that would define that Spanish style of uh, house. Split level. This is split level. Sometimes you hear us call it a tri-level. Split level is where there is a lower level and then a mid-level and then an upper level. Typically, one goes down to a living area. This might, the main floor might be the formal uh, living room right here, as you can see where that uh, cross is. But the living may be down here and sleeping in that third split floor. Stick home. A stick home looks like, to me, the Queen Anne or the Victorian, uh, because once again, it has a very tall vertical look. Uh, much taller than it should be and usually has uh, peaks and towers and pointed. See the pitch on this roof right here is very steep causing that pointed roof line and this ornate uh, lattice work right here. The Tudor home, steeply pitched roofs. Once again, there's the steep pitched roof. Usually has masonry chimneys within it. Um, the veranda, I'm trying to see it here, actually should go around it. And then, then we have the last one I want to talk about is the Victorian. The Victorian, once again, is the same as the Queen Anne or the stick. They are very hard to tell apart. As you can see, there's the turret room again, the round room. There's the breadboard lattice and the high peak, making it appear once again taller than it probably should be. All right, so these are all the styles of homes. You have this handout with which you can print out and look at it. Um, it's always kind of fun to understand the style of home. So when you start looking at homes, you can go, oh, that's a Queen Anne, 
or that's a shotgun. Now, some of these homes obviously lend themselves better to different areas of the, of the states. For instance, the Spanish Eclectic Home or the Pueblo Home tend to be in drier areas where, you know, wood is an issue, so they used different types of uh, building material. All right, I want to thank you guys for coming and uh, stick around. We got some more stuff to go through here. If I can figure out how to turn this off, bang.